Hey everybody, Dr. Knuckle here from eSleep Wellness. Okay, so um, I thought we would mix it up today and talk about something a little different. The last couple days we've talked about food and drink and how um, those could potentially be interfering with your sleep. Um, and so it's more trying to troubleshoot what's causing the problem. But you're probably looking for tips on how to sleep better. And I think um, to get that conversation started, it'd be first good to talk about melatonin. Um, this will be a great building block for things that we can talk about later to understand why certain tips work or how we can leverage what we know about melatonin to become a tip for sleeping better. So melatonin, you've probably heard of it. Um, most often people hear of it as a supplement that they can take. Um, and it's definitely grown in popularity over the last several years. Um, but it is in fact a hormone that our body naturally produces. Um, it, we make it out of our pineal gland in the brain and um, it is triggered, sometimes it's called a darkness hormone. It's triggered by, by light and dark, is really the dark that is the trigger for melatonin production. And now it does start a little before bed, um, roughly two hours, but it's really the darkness that is what the pineal gland, it's receptors in our eyes through a cascade of signals that then decides that it needs to really produce melatonin. We're now sleeping and that's what it wants. And then it will reach its highest peak um, in the wee hours of the morning. And then as later morning progresses, production declines and then, you know, lights up, you know, light is up and we are, it wakes us up and we stop making melatonin for the day. And then we, we go through the same cycle and it, it is a huge trigger to keep us aligned with our environment of the light dark cycle. And this is the case for most of us. Um, it does decline with age. So um, older adults are going to have less melatonin production. And so maybe melatonin supplementation is more advantageous for an older adult. There are other groups that it can be particularly advantageous for as well. Um, one of them being like shift workers. If you work off hours, uh, melatonin can help uh, you get sleep when you need it um, because you're in your situation, um, your light dark cycle is off from the environment. Another one is uh, people who travel, particularly if you are traveling across multiple time zones. So it really can help with jet lag. So yes, it's something that we produce naturally, but you can also take it as a supplement. And um, there, the doses range out on the market. Um, it can be, so research has used as little as 0.1 milligrams up to 10 milligrams. Because melatonin is a supplement, the FDA doesn't regulate melatonin and therefore effective dosing is a little ambiguous, but there's research studies. Um, it's just not controlled by the FDA. So, Interestingly, research shows that anywhere between half a milligram to five milligrams, um, some research says that it's equivocal in its effectiveness in producing sleep. Um, some research suggests that five milligrams is more beneficial than like a half a milligram, where um, the biggest benefit from taking melatonin is the ability to fall asleep faster. Um, and that it does show that it can do melatonin. Um, beyond that, you know, in terms of number of awakenings overnight, sleep efficiency, sleep duration, research is a little muddier on that. But in terms of falling asleep, it does have efficacy in reducing the amount of time it takes to fall asleep. Now, you can have dosages up to 10 milligrams, but research doesn't really support needing to take 10 milligrams. There's really no advantage between taking 10 milligrams versus five milligrams. 
there, the research doesn't support that you fall asleep any faster or that it's any more effective. So there's really not much reason to take that much. Um, and even five milligrams is not overly convincing. Um, you could get by with one or two milligrams. If you're going to be dabbling with melatonin, you may want to start lower and just see how your body responds to it. Now, the good thing about melatonin is that it's very, because it's something that we naturally make, it's very non-toxic, has very few side effects. Um, there's no evidence that there's tolerance. So there would be no reason to take more with time because um, you're not going to build a tolerance to it. And there's also no evidence of withdrawals if you decide to stop taking it. So um, it does have certainly have some advantages, it, you know, at least in trying to see if it's beneficial and it's certainly better than sleep aids like benzodiazepines, Ambien, things that have a lot more side effects and um, can be addictive and, you know, other things. There are, and sometimes there are some side effects that have been associated with melatonin. Some of it is, I mean, it's in general very rare. It has a very low side effect profile, but one of one that people say, which is not all bad, and I almost think it's a little funny that it's mentioned as a side effect, but that's drowsiness, which is kind of the point you want. Now, melatonin isn't overwhelmingly sedating or something. So it's not like you're going to take it and feel this rush of sedation. Um, melatonin is mild and its effects are mild. I mean, it may help you fall asleep, but it's not going to like knock you out and you're also not gonna have a hangover effect. Um, it, it will be, you know, maybe it's gonna shave 10 minutes off of how long it takes you to fall asleep, which, you know, when you're having trouble falling asleep is advantageous. Um, so it, you know, it's got some pros and cons and the fact that it is mild um, and, you know, so it's not going to totally knock you out like a log, but, you know, the advantages are you're also not going to be dealing with a lot of side effects or, or that kind of thing. It's really, you know, well tolerated by most people because we make it naturally. So you can take it um, roughly, well, you could take it up to two hours in advance. Um, it takes between, I mean, everybody's different, but between 30 minutes to two hours to take effect. Um, 30 minutes to an hour would be sufficient. Now, if you take it too early, you could end up throwing your circadian rhythm off because you took it too soon and it takes effect before you were quite ready for bed. Most people don't run into that problem because you kind of know when you want to go to bed and prepare for it, it you know, in advance. Um, and now most people can tolerate it. The, there are certain groups that should consider not. So if you take other medications, like any supplement, it can interact with that. So if you take an anticonvulsant, there's research that suggests that it, taking melatonin um, exogenously, like external to your body, um, can reduce the seizure threshold. Um, there's some evidence that it affects um, blood pressure. If you're taking antihypertensive medications for blood pressure, it can um, potentially increase your blood pressure. If you're pregnant or breastfeeding, um, best not to take it. So there are certain groups that should, if not avoid, at least inquire about your specific situation, just like a heads up if you have a primary care or somebody. Um, or you pop a question into me and I can, you know, give you some advice whether or not it would be contraindicated based off of the literature. But anyways, this is a very, you know, mild medication supplement that you can take, you can try it. And, you know, if it, you find that it's not really effective, then then stop taking it. There's no point in taking it if it, you're not finding any sort of benefit. But bear in mind, the effects are mild. Um, and then this is going to be a great foundation for future talks here on now how can we leverage melatonin in some tips in sleeping. All right, that was today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye guys.